my wife, okay, hates all of us. <laughs> I'll tell you this, I, I really do have ADHD, okay? And guess what, Does the fun doesn't end there. So do both of my kids, yeah. They both have ADHD. Oh, and guess what else? My wife, okay, hates all of us. <laughs> true story. Um, there are pluses and minuses to having ADD. Here's one of the pluses. A lot of guys, okay, they get yelled at because their wife realizes that they have zoned out of the conversation, okay? I don't get yelled at if I zone out. All I get is, did you take your pill today? And I'm always like, nope, I forgot. <laughs> but I'm going to go do that right now. And then I just never come back. <laughs> because we are good at problem solving. <laughs> Here's a good example of problem solving. My wife wanted an in-ground pool in our backyard. I called a construction company to get a quote. They said it's going to be 1200 bucks just to dig the hole. Doesn't include concrete work. 1200 bucks just to dig the hole. I said, I'll take care of that hole myself, OK? <laughs> and then I put an ad on Craigslist for free dirt. <laughs> when people showed up to my house, I gave them a shovel, and I said, you can have everything inside those orange spray-painted lines. <laughs> up there. You can have 12 feet of dirt from this side, but only three and a half feet of dirt <laughs> from that side, okay? And leave a stair pattern on the three and a half, <laughs> on the three and a half foot side. ADD is not all fun and games. There are minuses, okay? Last year, we went on our second honeymoon, my wife and I, to a little exotic island. We went to New Orleans. So, um, Louisiana. Now, here's the thing. If you have ADD, do not go to Mardi Gras, okay? <laughs> Bad call. For your second honeymoon, not the thing to do, all right? Lots of distractions at Mardi Gras. Big ones, little ones, perky ones. They are everywhere, distractions. And uh, my wife says, you look like a kid in a candy store. And I said, hey, I am married, all right? I am a kid with diabetes. Uh, that's in a candy store because, I mean, do the math. Uh, then she goes, I don't have to worry about you because you're my soulmate. And I said, definitely. And she was like, why did you say definitely all exuberantly like that? And I said, because when you're at the sink, I'm at the toilet, baby. And she's like, what are you talking about? And I was like, Badgerine. And uh, <laughs> she was like, don't Badgerine me right now. What does that mean if you're at the sink and I'm at the toilet? How does that make me your soulmate? And I was like, OK, first of all, I thought you said cellmate. <laughs> um, We are at Mardi Gras, and I'm not focused on this conversation right now, all right? I'm going to go back to the hotel and take another one of my pills. I'll be right back. <laughs> I'm going to start out in a way I haven't started out in a long time, I, with an impression. Um, do you guys like impressions? <laughs> yeah? All right. This is an impression that got me second place on America's Funniest People many years ago. This is uh, my impression of the last guy on a potato chip assembly line, okay? So this is the guy's job at the final position of the conveyor belt, all right? Any potato chip factory in the world. Here we go. That's the conveyor belt, okay? Just <laughs> setting expectations. guys are sweet. Uh, it's nice to be here. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I served my country when I got out of high school. I was in the United States Navy for four years out of my life. Uh, 
Thank you, yeah. It was good. I learned a lot when I served in the military about all the branches of the military. Like, here's something. Every branch of the military has their own acknowledgement greeting. A lot of people know the Marine Corps' acknowledgement greeting. It's not Semper Fi. If you know their, their acknowledgement greeting, yell it out. Oorah. Oorah, that is correct. Who knows the Army's acknowledgement greeting? Anybody know the Army's? What? Hua. It's Hua. HUA, H-U-A, heard, understood, acknowledged, right? Makes a lot of sense. Way better than the Navy's. Ours was, hey, girl, hey! Uh, yeah. A lot of people don't know that, okay? I just try to share knowledge. Speaking of knowledge, I'm looking at the, the looks that I'm getting from people, and I'm thinking now would be a good time to talk about my facial hair decisions, okay? So um, I know that I look like a cast member of Sons of Anarchy, uh, or the construction worker from the village people, um, but I am neither of those things, okay? I am a superhero, okay? Yes, us superheroes just have weird facial hair. If you'll notice, my friend Wolverine, right, he has got weird facial hair. I'm very similar to Wolverine. I'm just not from the wolf family of superhero. I am from the badger family <laughs> of superhero, okay? I am badgerine. Badgerine! Okay? Yeah, that's... That's my, I'm, I knew it when I was a kid. Look at my teeth, right? Really sharp. Plus, growing up, my teachers would always say, why are you so badgerine? And then I found out <laughs> when I was 36 years old that I had ADHD, and I realized it's a superpower, okay? <laughs> I am super annoying, all right? <laughs> and I'm super elusive, okay? So I'll annoy you, okay, and then you want to kill me, right? But then you can't catch me, all right? <laughs> then I just come back and I annoy you more, and then you just want to kill yourself, okay? <laughs> that's how it works. Badgery, right there, that's my power. That's my call sign, yeah. And Badgerine has been married for 25 years. That is a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, that's very, I totally deserve that reaction, thank you. Um, and I gotta say, you guys, what a nice, really diverse mix of white people we have here. I, uh, I really, uh, you got old and young, blonde and brunette. You, it's just crazy white people here. Um, it's awesome. Uh, I, uh, I do have ADD, that is for reals. Um, and, and Badgerine's been married 25 years, like I said, and here's the thing, people. Um, you want to, ladies, you want to keep your man 25 years? You set expectations early in the relationship. That's what my wife did. She said, don't cheat on me, don't lie to me, and I'll treat you like a king. And here it is, 25 years later, I don't cheat, I don't lie, and she treats me like a king. She really does. Like a king that doesn't get lucky a lot, okay, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, like a, yeah, like a king that needs internet access. There's a, um, I, whatever that means. Here's my point. Um, I was upset last week, okay, because I lost internet access, and I, uh, I uh, called my provider, and I said, help me, provider, because you are not providing me internet access. And I didn't get a human. I got an automated attendant. You have your, the girl voice, have you gotten, like, Let's reset your cable modem, right? Very perky. Like, what I'd like you to do is unplug the power from the back of your cable modem. <laughs> and when you're done, say power unplugged. <laughs> I'm like, you're chipper. <laughs> is this the girl from the progressive commercials? <laughs> I'm trying to see if I have it unplugged. And the phone says, are you still there? And I said, I'm here and I have it unplugged now. And she goes, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Did you say your power's unplugged? Just say yes or no. <laughs> so I was like, yes. <laughs> and then she was like, okay, great. <laughs> I wanna download that app for my phone, all right? I want the automated attendant app. <laughs> 
So when my wife calls, I can just forward her to the automated attendant <laughs> app and let it answer on my behalf in a perky version of my voice. And then just text message me the important details of whatever that phone call was all about, right? That would be awesome. I just get a text message, Karen's being mean at work. Pick up milk on your way home. Duration, 57 minutes. <laughs> Thank you, automated attendant app. <laughs> the bad part, I would still have to sound like automated attendant around the house, so she wouldn't know when I'm forwarding her to automated attendant. <laughs> like on the weekends, I'd have to walk around the house like, did you want me to clean out the garage? <laughs> if you'd like me to clean out the garage, <laughs> Say clean garage. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't get that. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I try to be honest about my ADD. The other day, this guy was repeating instructions to me, and I said, listen up, fella. You do not have to tell me twice, okay? You need to tell me seven to <laughs> nine times. <laughs> ADD people are always trying to be funny, and the people that we talk to usually don't think we are very funny, okay? <laughs> Good example, my wife walks in the family room the other day, and she's like, why am I so itchy? And I said, well, I think it's because you're pronouncing it with a silent B. <laughs> I want to take all of you home with me right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I was like, I don't know why you're so itchy <laughs> all the time. But uh, <laughs> turns out I should have just said dry skin, everybody. That's the point. <laughs> Live and learn. That's how you... See, that's the thing. We don't think. We, we, ADD people, we don't think. Um, you know, I had one rule growing up my whole life, and that rule was if you think of something funny, you say that thing right now! Right, that was my rule. And I lost a lot of friends with that rule, okay? <laughs> but then, when I was 36, I got diagnosed ADHD, I got put on Adderall, which is a stimulant, and not good for your heart, but it gives you a filter, all right? Because <laughs> once, yeah, I would always say inappropriate things, and then I started taking Adderall, and then I would still think of funny things, I'd be like, oh, that's funny, I should say that. And then the Adderall would be like, don't say that! And I'd be like, thank you, Adderall, this is a filter. This is what I've heard about and wanted for so long. And now I have, and it's wonderful. And uh, I have a friend who has ADD, but he won't get diagnosed, and so he doesn't take anything. So he always is saying crazy things. So half of my act comes from his house. And uh, I was at... Tim's house a month ago, and his son, this is my friend Tim, his son Alex, almost five, cute kid. Alex comes up and goes, Dad, I forget, am I awesome or am I fantastic? And Tim was like, no, buddy, you are autistic. <laughs> okay, remember? How many times have I told you that? And Alex was like, 1,023 times, because it's a Mersenne Prime, and it's one away from two to the 10th power. <laughs> and I'm like, that kid is autistic, okay, first of all. I had to Google Mersenne Prime. I was pretty impressed. All right. Look, the lesson of that story is that ADD people say things that makes them lose friends. And I've lost friends, okay? My wife gave me very good advice to keep friends. She said, if a friend tells you bad news in their life, you just say, I'm sorry to hear that. And nothing else. <laughs> She also said, buy them a card or a gift, because actions speak louder than words. And that is very good advice. A week later, my friend told me that he had been diagnosed with Lyme disease. So I said, I'm sorry to hear that. Nothing else. Got him a get well card, too, and I put a coupon in for Lyme Aid. <laughs> because... You know why, you know why I did that. <laughs> My other friend, he went to Florida and got his hand bit off by an alligator because they jump out of trees now. And 
it's real, Google it, Badgerine! And uh, it jumped out of a tree and it bit his hand off. And he hated the Gatorade. <laughs> yeah. So. I, um, I don't even just have ADD. I also have dyslexia, because God was like, give him something else. And uh, <laughs> dyslexia, that is more than number and letter confusion. You overthink words. Here's a good example. My doctor said, eat and drink antioxidants. They're good for you, antioxidants. Anti, though, is a prefix. And it means opposite of whatever word comes after it, right? So if antioxidants are good for us, that means that normal plain oxidants are therefore bad for us. And that is right and true and correct because my mom said that I was an oxidant and that is how <laughs> I'm, oh, whatever, Provo, okay. I'm the only one, okay. I see how you are now, all right. That's fine, I don't even know why I'm telling you guys all my ailments, to be quite honest. I don't like it when people know I'm sick. I try to hide it. I'm good at it, too. I can always hide it. I've already figured out ways of getting out of diseases that I haven't even been diagnosed with yet. <laughs> but God forbid, if I am ever diagnosed later in life with, I don't know, let's say Parkinson's disease, I'm just going to carry a Splenda packet with me everywhere I go. And then <laughs> no one will know that I have Parkinson's disease. This is cool. Why does he still have that Splendid packet? He's had that for two years. He should rip the top and check it, because I'll bet you all that Splendid's at the bottom by now, right? Like, I'm just trying to see how many people are on this bus ride to hell with me, and it seems like I have a lot of passengers on board, so I will drive safely, okay? Speaking of driving safely, drive safely, everybody, especially on the holidays. That's when the animals jump in front of your car. Seriously, holidays. Last year, Christmas Day, right? Holiday. Hit a deer. Mess that deer up, okay? <laughs> After I hit the deer, none of its lights would light up anymore. And, like, <laughs> it's, it's, like, its head that used to go up and down like this real slow, it wouldn't even do that anymore. And... And thank God there, there was an airbag because I went through that deer like it was made out of a uh, wireframe. And uh, it's an airbag with a big snowman inside. And uh, that, was, that was good. That was there. Um, and then on Halloween last year, I hit a gopher. But it might have been a groundhog or a beaver, but it wasn't a badger badgering. Uh, it was like a gigantic squirrel. Um, you know what? It was a horrible costume, all right? First of all, I, you know, I, I have no idea what that kid was. I, uh, I just took the candy and I got the heck out of there is what I did. I think the lesson of that story is don't trick or treat as a squirrel, okay? Because that was my takeaway, um, besides the candy. Okay. Um, I've been doing a lot of traveling lately. I, I've, um, I'll tell you this, ADD people, we can focus on stuff if we don't take our pill, but only on stuff that we're interested in. Like, I'm really into rock and roll, and I know all the one-hit wonder bands, and I know um, trends. Like, here's a trend about rock and roll I bet you didn't know. The best bands in rock and roll tended to begin, their name of the band tended to begin with the word the, Okay. Like The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, The Who, The Doors, The Police, The White Stripes, Black Keys, Red Hot Chili Peppers, The Cars, The Kinks, The Vines, The Hives, The Clash, The Jimi Hendrix Experience. There's a whole bunch. I can keep going. But I also noticed this. The worst bands, okay, in the history of rock and roll tended to begin with the word Nickelback. Okay? And... <laughs> yeah. That's right. All right. If you listen to Nickelback on noise-canceling headphones, you don't hear anything. <laughs> Provo, you have very good taste in music, my dad. Um, 
I do love rock and roll. I, I like 60s had better lyrics, 70s had better guitar. You could tell lyrics were getting worse in the late 60s because Cream had the White Room song. It's like, in the white room with black curtains in the station. They wrote that song because they needed one more song on the album they were working on. They were in a white room with black curtains in a railroad station. <laughs> I mean, they made millions. I could have done that, right? I could have been like, in the bathroom with the shower curtain that had little fishes. <laughs> That's a great song right there. And, and then they get the worst lyrics, like, been through the desert on a horse with no name. Who cares, okay? <laughs> right? You guys live in a desert. Like, go through the desert in a Volkswagen with no air conditioning, right? Like, <laughs> That's something that I can relate to, right? <laughs> in the late 70s, you couldn't understand the lyrics. Some bands messed up all the lyrics. Some bands messed up the middle of the band that messed up all the lyrics. Doobie Brothers. I, but then I, it won't I'm making it up. I don't know the words to that song. <laughs> the band that messed up the middle, Steely Dan of the Peg song. Great song, right? It's like, doo -doo -doo -doo. it's such a catchy. It's like, Peg, it will come back to you. Peg is yours over. It's over. Yeah, it's your favorite foreign movie. What the heck was all that in the middle? Did anybody? I think they had the Doobie Brothers in the middle, because I didn't get any of the middle. And then in the 90s, the peppers, the red hot chili peppers, they messed up their lyrics. I couldn't get the, I, I got the beginning and the end of the pepper songs. I didn't get the middle, right? That was the part I didn't get. It's like, uh, take me to the river, lay me on your shore. I'll be coming back, baby. I'll be coming back for more. Do the little things you say you don't want, baby. Don't so come on, come on, baby. I cannot forget, but I will not remember. Say my pleasure's that much better, but I won't regret it never. What was done with my Kong Kong, babe? Did anybody get that part? <laughs> No one got that part, right? I didn't get that part. And then the next album, they were like, I know, I know it's you. Oh, my God, I know, I know. Like, I, what was that? I got, I know it's me and whatever. And then the band that messed up the, all their lyrics in the 90s, Pearl Jam with the Yellow Ledbetter, right? Eddie Vedder does not know the words. There are no words to that song, okay? They wrote that song because it's their biggest hit and they close every show on it. And he drinks red wine throughout the show, so, which is good because by the time they need to end the show, he can't pronounce words anymore. So <laughs> it's perfect. And it's like, home feel Oh, yeah. I crank that song every time, okay? Because I know all the words. And uh, <laughs> there were some bands you could understand every word they were saying in the 90s. You wish they'd shut up, though. Like, I get knocked down. I get up again. You ain't never going to keep me down. I get knocked down. Stay down, okay? Um, <laughs> right? Because you're getting your butt kicked is what's happening. Uh, that song's horrible. That song and a couple drops of water on my forehead, I'm gonna admit to stuff that I didn't do, okay? That's, that's an annoying song, right? You know, you know. Um, yeah, I, I love doing this job. I, I've um, been doing comedy everywhere. I started on the East Coast. I used to live in New York for a little while. That's a dangerous place. Anybody ever here ever live in New York City? Clap it yeah, a couple people. Do you live in one of the five boroughs? Yeah, which one? The Bronx, give it up for that guy. He's got a knife on him now. He's got a knife. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I, if you ever live in one of the five boroughs in New York City, here's a good survival tip that I learned when I lived there, and it's easy to remember. All you do, ready, is avoid, okay, other people, all right? <laughs> and in Times Square, you're trying to avoid flyer pamphlet people. They are just trying to put a flyer in your hand. Here's what you do. There's a technique for this. It's called the full up technique. You carry something in both hands. Ta-da. <laughs> now you're full up, okay? 
Now you can't accept their flyers or their pamphlets because you're already full up. I would always carry my cell phone, okay, and a handgun, and I would be like, <laughs> like I am full up right now, okay? Um, why don't you give that to this guy, maybe, or one of those two people, because I can't, can't pay. Oh, now I'm getting a call. Hello? Mm -hmm. I am on a phone call right now. I already told you. Oh, hold on a second. I have to kill somebody. And New York, New York is the city that the terrorists are trying to blow up. Don't, don't forget that, because they're still trying. And you know what? We're getting them. We got that guy who looks like um, Ron Jeremy. What, what's his name? Sheikh Khalik Mohammed. We got that guy. You guys, do you guys go to FBI.gov? No? Do you, no one? We don't know what terrorists are. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a website called FBI.gov, and uh, they have terrorists on there. And I have to look, because I'm a superhero. And um, <laughs> I was out there looking the other day, because, you know, my boss. And... Uh, at S.H.I.E.L.D. And, um, <laughs> so, anyways, I don't know if you've been out there, but if you haven't, you should check it out. Eight out of ten right now of the top ten terrorists are named Mohammed. They have Mohammed in their name. One guy, his name's Mohammed Sher Mohammed Khan. Two Mohammeds. Mm. Watch out. Uh, <laughs> anyways, and look, I'm not, some of my best friends are Muslim, okay? Unless you work for Homeland Security, the nun of my BFFs are Muslim, okay? And, uh, and I'm not trying to disparage the name Muhammad. That's the prophet of Islam. I get it. I'm not trying to say Muhammad is a bad name. I'm just trying to say Muhammad Shir Muhammad Khan's parents had really poor choice in syllabic pentameter, okay? <laughs> because they made their son the John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt of the <laughs> Muslim community, right? It's like, Mohammed, Sheh Mohammed Khan, his name is my name, too. Whenever he comes out, people always shout, watch out, Mohammed, Sheh Mohammed Khan. All I'm trying to say is I like to sing, okay? <laughs> I wanted to audition for American Idol, but th there were rules. You had to be between 16 and 28 years old to audition for that show. And I'm only that age when I'm in an adult chat room on the internet. So <laughs> I was unable to audition for the show. But I don't really, that's not a very good reality TV show to me. To me, the best reality TV show is Antiques Roadshow. Do you guys ever watch Antiques Roadshow? <laughs> Yeah, those are real people. Like, you and I coming on that show with stuff from their house to find out if it's valuable, right? And they only show two types of people. One person thinks they have something very valuable, and then they find out, no, no, actually, that is not very valuable, right? And then the other person they show on the show, somebody doesn't know if their object's valuable. They find out that is priceless. First time I saw it, I saw the guy who thought he had something valuable. He goes, this is a vase from the Ming Dynasty. And the expert appraiser says, these markings are consistent with that time frame. But if you'll notice here on the bottom where it's etched, made in Taiwan, right there, do you, do you see this? This is bad, OK? Because this is written in English. And the Ming Dynasty did not know English. And then I saw this other guy in the show, and he was like, I found this stick in my basement. It's like a carved stick, and it's got writing on the side. What do you think that's worth right there, that stick? <laughs> and the expert appraiser's like, so this is the staff that was used by Moses to part <laughs> the Red Sea. <laughs> you might want to put that in some bubble wrap, actually. <laughs> so, this has been in my basement 14 years. My basement flooded two years ago. I wish I would have known what it was two years ago. <laughs> sure could have used it two years ago. How do you work this? Power cries compels me. <laughs> I don't even feel the wind kicking up. Hello? Power cries. Power cries. I'm not trying to be mean towards Christ. I'm a Christian. I believe in the rapture, and I really do. I got a moonroof in my car, so... <laughs> I'll be ready when that goes down. I'll be like, take me, Jesus. 
Let's, oh, let me suck it in this time, Jesus. One more time, Jesus. I need KY in my car. All right. Um, you guys are a blast. I'm having a good time. Uh, I'm lucky to be here, too. I'll tell you, this is a true story. My sister almost killed me. Um, uh, do you, you guys have sisters or brothers? Yeah? Those are, how many of you have parents? Anyone? Yeah? Awesome. We have a lot in common. Uh, yeah, because my sister doesn't know how to drive in the snow. Are you guys good at driving in the snow here? Yeah, I would imagine so, yeah. We used to, at the time this happened, we were living in the D.C. area, and <laughs> not good drivers out there, including my sister. But uh, it was her car, so I didn't have the choice, right? I was like, let me drive. And she goes, no, it's my car, and I'm going to drive. And there's snow on the ground, and lots, and ice. And I said, uh, all right, let, you know, pump your brakes, downshift, you know, and I'm telling her all day, and all, all of a sudden she locks them up. We're fishtailing to our death. And... Uh, and I'm in the passenger seat pumping my imaginary brake, right? <laughs> this is real. We'd be stopped right now, right? And she has the real one locked up, and she wants to scream, but she can't scream because of the brother-sister rivalry. She knew that it's my job, you know, as her brother to tease her because I've been telling her all day to pump her brakes, and she's not and we're gonna die because of it. And uh, I get to tease her. But she didn't, um, she, she didn't scream, but it wasn't really a scream, it was more like Star Trek. She was like, ah! And I wanted to make fun of her for that, but I was in the passenger seat like, Because it was scary. We almost died. I'm, I'm lucky to be here tonight. Are you guys having fun? Yeah? You guys got kids? Who's, yeah? I got kids. Do they have ADD too? <laughs> no, lucky you. Oh, uh, yes, yeah? Oh, yeah, that's good luck at that. Uh, that's crazy. I, I grew up, my two kids are, I love them they're to death. They're the best. Um, but they're, they're grown up now. My son, I remember when they were little. I've always been overprotective. I have a boy and a girl. How about you? You got, oh, your, your mom? You look like her sister. Crazy. That's, what do they do in the water here in Provo? This is, that's, these are, so you have a boy and a girl too. And they both have ADD? Oh, wow. We have a lot in common. That's, you guys are doing really well for having ADD. Yeah, you got, wow, this is, does he have ADD? He does? Oh, wow. I'm home. This is great. Oh. Now, I, I've always been overprotective. I bet you are, too, of your daughter. She's beautiful. I'm very overprotective of my daughter. When my daughter was 12, I had her tubes tied. And, uh... <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I, they wouldn't do it. <laughs> so, now that she's all grown up, it's fun when, they're gr when they grow up because they're, they're, they're witty and we have these cute little banters. And like the other day, she was like, Dad, those shoes you are wearing are so gay. And I was like, well, they should be. They just came out of the closet. <laughs> So, I know that's silly, but it's hilarious. <laughs> and that really happened. Uh, and my son, he's been in Taekwondo since he was four. He's 19. He goes to CU Boulder now. But when he was a kid, he was going to Taekwondo. And he got his, um, when he was, what, six years old, he got his African-American belt. And uh, <laughs> one, uh, he... I guess I could say it here. Um, uh, he, got, it, he got a belt. It doesn't matter what color. The point is, he got a belt. I want, I want everyone to feel comfortable, okay? Uh, one night, I heard a noise and woke me up, and I said to my wife, lock the door, and I went to my son's room. I, said, um, or I went to my daughter's room, and I said, lock your door. And then I went to my son's room, and I was like, wake up, little man. I think someone's in the kitchen downstairs. Go check it out. <laughs> Don't forget your belt. Put your belt on. I'll be here when you get back. 
Don't forget secret knock, okay? Because that door's going to be locked. So, uh, you guys have been blessed, and I've had a great time. And um, I'll, I'll leave you with this. Um, I've been blessed to have been doing stand-up comedy for 26 years, and I've gotten to work with some of the biggest names in, in the history of comedy, for real. Household names. If I dropped these names, you would know who these names are. That's not a cool move to do. Um, so I'm not going to do that. But I will tell you this. I, I tried to learn from these greats, and one guy taught me something that I never even expected to learn. So I'm going to mention one name. And he's no longer with us, passed away in 2005. If you know who he is, you're lucky. If you don't, look him up on YouTube or VidAngel. Uh, his name was Mitch Hedberg, and he was super funny. And he would wear dark glasses on stage. You couldn't see his eyes, OK? But I was backstage. I could see behind his glasses. And his eyes were closed during his entire set. So after the show, I said, Mitch, you just did 45, material, 45 minutes of material with your eyes closed. Why, what, what's up with that? And he goes, I don't want to see that one guy who's sitting right up front with his arms crossed, not laughing at anything. I just close my eyes and I play to where I hear the laughs are coming from. And I did not expect that answer. It made me start to debate internally whether or not I needed classes like that. <laughs> And then I started thinking, well, I have Adderall, so uh, <laughs> if there's this one jerk, I can ignore that one jerk, right? But there were no jerks here tonight. Everybody was awesome. And ma'am, who with the family just like mine, what's your name? Heather, can I buy you a drink? What, do you, what are you drinking? Anything dry from the bar. Okay, uh, <laughs> your next rip beer floats on me, Heather. Yes, and don't clap at that. I learned this trick from Bill Cosby. Okay, you guys have been autistic. Thanks so much. Have a great night.